Welcome to the Alison Lombatis Show, a podcast to help women discover and rediscover their confidence and style. I'm Alison Lombatis, and I am thrilled to have you tuning in today. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Stephanie, a school counselor, mom of teenagers, and podcaster in her 40s, who has been struggling to find confidence in her appearance. Midlife body changes, work wardrobe expectations, and busy mornings have left her feeling less than inspired in her outfit choices. What Stephanie is really seeking is to look and feel good in her clothes and be empowered by her unique personal style. During our conversation, we unlocked some exciting ways for Stephanie to embrace and rediscover her creativity that had her itching to dive into her closet again. I can't wait for you to hear this conversation. Well, good morning, Lauren. How was your weekend? Hello. My weekend was good. We're recording this in March. We just had the time change. So real talk, the wake up was a little rough this morning, (laughs) if I'm being honest. But no, weekend was good. Dove into my book club book. And sometimes that is a little challenging depending on the book. But this one I got in right away. So that always feels good. What about you? How was your weekend? It was good. I'm with you on the time change. I'm like, can we just get a do away with this thing already? (laughs) Seriously, it's like, how can an hour rock my world so much all day yesterday? Where did this day go? And then this morning, I made a commitment that I wasn't going to oversleep. And then I laid back down and and it it was game over. So I'm just I'm just going to be an hour behind. and, And I've got to accept that. So And I'm happy to hear about your book club book. Yeah, I can't imagine. I don't do book clubs because I don't want to commit to like feeling like I have to read the full book. How do you get past that if it's something that you're just not, if you're not digging? Well, I think what helps for me and my book club is we only meet six times a year. So that's only six books out of a lot of books. So that gives me enough free space that I can actually play around and and read what I want to read in between. So it doesn't like if there's one book that sucks, it's not completely upending every book that I can that I have to read, you know, low commitment. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not the end of the world, right? And I'm sure you can get and you get something out of all of them. Well, your your oversleeping is not showing you look fabulous. I'm also loving your sweater today. And I feel like that is one of those I'm going to say like blush pink, which I know we had kind of a, a blush pink kind of focused moment a couple of years ago on the blog. We talked a lot about how it seems to be a color that works for a lot of people. And hand in hand with that kind of hot topic of the moment happening on your social media right now, you just recently talked about color analysis on your Instagram account at Allison Lombatis. Let's talk about color analysis. So like quick explainer, I know you're not a color analysis expert, but quick explainer for those that are not familiar, how would you describe color analysis? What is it? Yeah, color analysis is really, typically you're doing this one-on-one with someone who is an expert on color who I am not. (laughs) I'm glad you acknowledge that. But this person is able to take into consideration things like your eye color, your skin tone, your hair color, and recommend the colors that you should wear, particularly around your face that are going to enhance your natural beauty, really. That's that's color analysis in a nutshell. And yes, I have, it's been kind of a spicy topic lately. And, and you know, I feel like, especially on TikTok, this has sort of exploded within this past year. Even my daughters are coming to me, talking to me like, hey, you know, am I wearing the right colors? I don't, I don't I'm hearing all this color analysis talk. And I, I kind of have a different take on it probably than, than most people in the style space, than most, you know, personal stylists do. And I did a video about it on my Instagram last week. And I wasn't sure how it was going to go over because I'm not saying throw a color analysis out the window by any stretch of the imagination. But I do feel like in my experience with outfit formulas and the thousands of women who have done the program that at times, this can be one of those little sticking points that feel a little bit overwhelming at first, if I'm being honest. I totally agree with you. We're going to get there. Before we get there, I would love to know what role, if any, does color analysis play in your wardrobe and your style? Do you know your color season? And if yes, how much do you follow it or pay attention to it? So I've never had an actual official color analysis done, but I have had an expert tell me that I am a soft summer. And I looked at the colors and I don't use those to make my decisions. Honestly, I wear what I love. If I'm drawn to something, whether it's, you know, it's got 
puffy sleeves, which I want puffy sleeves. It has some kind of like little detail that feels very me or feels like a signature item that that I would love, then I'm more drawn to shape and proportion than I am to color. So those are the things that matter to me. And it's really about choosing what matters most to you. So you're going to find all kinds of colors in my closet. I wear warms, I wear cools, I wear neutrals, I wear every color season. And I basically just gravitate toward what makes me happy. And I'm a true believer in wearing what you love. But I also know that there is a time and a space for color analysis. If that's one of the things that makes you feel more confident, then absolutely it is worth the time and the effort and the energy to get it right and to buy the pieces that feel like they're authentic to you. Absolutely. That totally makes sense. And I think you're, if I recall correctly, I think you're also a little bit more neutral leaning. So you can kind of, you can dip into those cool tones. You can dip into those warm tones. But I think you've mentioned before that like your heart really also like loves neutrals. You gravitate to neutrals a lot. And then those pops of colors on either side as you desire, as your heart desires. So if I'm remembering correctly, I think that you also tend to kind of fall right down the middle of the like the neutrals line. So you can you can wear warm colors, you can wear cool colors. I know you've said before, like you're a diehard neutrals fan, that is where your heart leads you a lot of the time. But it also sounds like you're able to kind of dip your toe in either side of either side of the rainbow, depending on what your heart desires in the moment. Does that feel true to you? Yeah, totally. And I think that that's a big reason why I personally don't focus on color analysis as much because that same color analysis expert shared with me that I can wear just about every color. And so that makes sense, right? It's not as do or die for me to dress in the in those colors and be able to be drawn to the things that I love instead. But I think, you know, one of the benefits of color analysis is that while it can seem overwhelming if you don't know your colors or if that's kind of like that sticking point where it's preventing you from taking that first step toward rebuilding your wardrobe, then it can also on the flip side of that, after you kind of get your feet wet, you have some of your staples in place and you're ready to branch out a little bit, it could also, and I, I actually received a DM about this this week, it can also sort of limit the choices that you have, not in a bad way, but create a little bit of parameters around what you're purchasing. And that can also be super helpful too in guiding those decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great point. It kind of gives you like you said, like guardrails of, okay, it helps narrow your focus from everything on the web or everything in the store to, oh, I should try and dial in on these key colors. So, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of taking and using what works and letting go of the rest. So if, if color analysis feels overwhelming and is paralyzing you, put it aside. But if it's helping you and giving you those guardrails to make that curation process easier for you, have at it. Absolutely. I love, I love that perspective. That's excellent. I know you've done a lot. I, I know you've done a little bit of work in this space and you've identified the colors that work for you. And I think that you, I, I would say, I don't think you follow them to the letter but you do allow them to inform your decisions. So what, what, what's kind of your whole take on it? Yeah. Um, so I did a virtual color analysis, gosh, probably five years ago now. Uh, apparently I'm a deep winter, but then I've also spoken to another color analysis person who said, I don't know if that's entirely correct. So I don't know. <laughs> um, so I'm a deep winter question mark, possibly. And in, in terms of how I, either like leverage that information or I don't. I feel like this is like a bad thing to say, but but it's not. I kind of, for the most part, I just wear what I like. <laughs> so very much like you. I have started more recently to try to be a little bit more intentional of, for example, like red is apparently a really good color for me. And I don't wear, honestly, I think I have one red top in my closet <laughs> and I don't wear it very often because it's not a heck yes. Really, it needs to go in the, in the donate pile. But on my, I shared in my style story episode, I kind of have like a list on my phone of, of my little style cheat notes. And so one of the things on that list is you look really good in red and blue. Just to remind me when I'm out in stores, like, hey, keep an eye. Don't, don't pass this by and assume it's not for you because it is, it, it is probably worth trying, right? Like cobalt blue is a color that I love. It was actually probably, I think it was one of the first items that I bought when I originally started with outfit formulas. Winter 2016 was my first season. And that was the season where we had the cobalt blue 
top with the the agate stone necklace. I don't know if you remember that. It was very 2016. So that was my very first season with you. And I went out and I got that shirt. And man, that shirt, like I feel like a million bucks when I wear that. But at the same time, I, I'm not like a to the letter person. I don't only wear items in my colors. I wear what I want to wear. And again, I also have noticed, and honestly, I think the biggest thing that made me notice it, I changed my glasses recently. And so these are like clear lenses and I used to have black frames. And with something I've noticed more recently is, you know, I've, I've got dark hair, but I also, you know, have a lot of gray and I was wearing a gray sweater on, on a call as so I'm looking at myself on the screen and I had my clear glasses and I just, I realized, oh, there's no contrast here. I felt very like washed out and like I wasn't popping anywhere on the screen. And I'm probably not, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm not doing a very good example of contrasting today either. I'm wearing a white t-shirt, probably not my best look, but again, I'm, I'm learning, right? I'm starting to pay attention. So I guess probably that's the best way for me to explain how I use or don't use it. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to pay attention. I'm noticing, but I don't, this is probably one of the few areas of my life where I am not a strict rule follower about it. I love that. And I think it is just about noticing, paying attention, layering mm -hmm. things in as they feel good, as they feel right, not feeling like you are, you know, hemmed in by any rules that you have to follow and, and really just figuring out as you go and just getting a little bit better each time and, and experimenting with style. And, and that's what's that's what's so important is just like taking those first steps. And and I think that was really the whole point in my video that I did on Instagram is not to allow things like color analysis or wearing the exact right pieces for your body shape be the barrier for you to experiment with style or to start, you know, rebuilding your wardrobe. Everybody has to start somewhere. And these are the kind of those next level things that can inform your decision making. And you can decide, does this matter to me or does it not? And that's the beauty of it because style is supposed to be fun. 100%. Progress, not perfection yes. <laughs> for starters. Yes. Um, also, if you haven't seen that video, we will link that in the show notes for you at alisonlabattis.com slash podcast so you can get caught up on that video as well. I would also love to hear how much does color analysis factor into the outfit plans that you design for your style program outfit formulas? Um, is that part of your creation process? Are you focused less on spring colors in the spring season versus these are the trending colors this season? Oh, this is such a good question. I don't think I've ever answered this before. And I know it in my head, but I like to start with a very neutral palette, especially with our closet staples, because we want to get longevity out of these pieces. We want to wear them season after season, year after year. So really, those are going to be in a very, very neutral palette. And it is up to the individual to decide, do I want to follow this exact palette as provided, or do I want to lean more cool with my neutrals or more warm with my neutrals? So I'm giving you these example pieces, but it's truly a formula. So you get to adjust that to, to fit whatever you want. And then I add in the pops of color because it's a little bit more difficult when you're building a capsule wardrobe to build it around a lot of colorful pieces because you're not going to get that mix and match aspect. So you're not going to get to reuse those pieces, you know, in multiple different ways if you can't have that mix and match component in there. So when I'm choosing those pops of color, I do lean into trends more so. And I feel like, you know, seasonal trends are to be expected we're gonna have the bright pinks in the spring. We're also gonna have the pastel colors in the spring. Right now, the Barbie pink, of course, is having its moment, but you're gonna see more of those brights and also the pastels in the spring months. And you're gonna see a little bit more navy, some some of the traditional neutrals that you would see in spring. And you know, the same thing with summer, you're gonna see the turquoise and the coral and the things that we would traditionally associate with summer, bright yellow. Same thing with fall, you're gonna see those traditional fall colors in the rust and the olive, but you're also gonna see, sometimes we've been seeing that blush pink come up in the fall. And so I do kind of look at the combination overall and say, okay, what colors are trending this season? What are traditional seasonal colors that we're seeing? And then decide how I'm going to incorporate those colors into the capsule wardrobe that's also going to make the most sense from a mixing and matching building a capsule standpoint as well. Gotcha. Okay, that makes total sense. So it sounds to me, it sounds to me more like, you know, just like, like the name implies, right? Outfit formulas 
just like we encourage members to adapt for their climate, for their lifestyle, for their body shape, for all of those individual factors that make it personalized, they are also empowered to make those adaptations to personalize for colors as well. So if they're seeing, for example, we've got our spring 2024 guide. Welcome to today, Lauren, that just came out. We've got that Barbie pink accent color. If Barbie pink is not for you, you can sub that in with your preferred colors, right? Am I understanding that correctly? Absolutely. 100%. Not only that, but I encourage you to swap in that color. You know, you can follow it to the T and that's the beauty of outfit formulas. If you want to follow it to the letter, that makes it easy for you, right? You can go out and get the exact pieces that are pictured, or you can shop your own closet for pieces that are very similar to that. But that personalization is really where the outfit formula comes to life. And that's what I love about our community is I get to go in there and see how are they interpreting this outfit formula to work for their lifestyle and to work for their preferences and all the things. And and the women in there just truly inspire each other too with their different choices. And, and I see some things sometimes and I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that. And it's so beautiful and so inspiring. So yeah, I, I think that's, as, as the creator of the outfit formula, I think that's the most fun part for me is really just seeing what our members do with it. I totally agree. The, the inspiration in the group the number of times where I'm going, oh my gosh, I never would have thought of that. And I love what she's done. And now I want to go in my closet and play and mimic some of that inspiration. So that's awesome. We talked about how, you know, adapting for your colors. And I think, I think part of when that best comes into play is when you've kind of built up a little bit more confidence in your wardrobe, in your style. So we touched on this briefly before, but do you recommend people diving their toes into color analysis and exploring that aspect of their wardrobe? Is that a is that a day one conversation you would have with somebody or is that something that you think is better left for a further further section along in the journey? Yeah, you know, there are two schools of thought on this. I personally think you, you should give it a little bit of time and marinate on the concepts of building your closet staples. If you do know that you lean cooler or warmer, you can allow that to inform your decisions when you are purchasing your closet staples, but you don't have to allow this to be the thing that's gonna stop you from shopping. I think over time you can layer in more of those colors that you know are in your palette. But what I see with most members in the Alpha Formulas program is that it takes them about a year to really get to a good place with their base pieces in their wardrobes. And once you have that foundation built, that's when you can kind of start branching out and exploring. And I'm not saying go out and waste a bunch of money on colors that don't suit you or that you don't love or whatever, but maybe just keep it simple during that first year as you're getting your feet wet and really just exploring and experimenting with style and figuring out what works for you. You don't have to make big investments for this to happen. You can shop thrift stores if you want to, to get your core pieces in place, but don't allow color analysis to be that thing that sort of stops you in your tracks and is the thing that doesn't make you move forward with getting your basics in place. Absolutely. I think part of what is hanging people up right now, like you mentioned, it's it's also kind of a trending topic right now. So when you're, you know, exploring the style space and and really feeling like, oh, what I'm doing right now is not working for me and trying to dip your toes into learning about what are my options and what should I be paying attention to? If you're hearing everybody talking about color analysis, I think it makes you think that that is also something that you need to care about. And like you say in your video, does it mm -hmm. matter to you? And and I I just I'm personally I'll say in social media, especially, I'm just seeing this recurring theme of, I feel like women are almost afraid to trust their instincts and to trust themselves because there are so many voices out there saying so many different things that it's gotten too loud and too noisy. And so we've lost this ability to just listen to our gut and therefore are paralyzed mm. to do anything. Like it, it makes me so sad to have that realization. I'm saying this, I don't know what the answer is here. You know, curate your feed to the people that are speaking to the things that matter to you, maybe would be a good first step. I don't know. Does any of that resonate with you? Does that, are you seeing any of that in your community as well? A thousand percent. Yes. Yes. I can't tell you how many DMs I got after that video of women saying, thank you for this. Thank you for saying this. I, I, have been so hung up on this this past year. And there's so many messages that we're getting and you're just 
simplifying this for me and I don't worry about this. And, and I think that that's, you know, just giving women permission to focus on what matters to you, to what feel, what feels good to you and to wear what you love. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Just wear what you love. We're here to provide the parameters for you. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what you love and what works best for your life, for your lifestyle, for your preferences and choose what matters. Amen. <laughs> So for people that that are ready, that want that guidance, that that want to maybe level up that they've been doing this for a, a year or so, they feel like they've got they're in a good place. Do you have any resources, recommendations that you can share about color analysis? Is there any anyone that you follow online who you think is doing a really good job at it? Anything like that that we can point people in the direction of? Yes, you can reach out to Shannon at Color Curate and we will link up her website and our show notes. And Shannon has collaborated with Outfit Formulas through the years to provide some color analysis for us. And yes, I highly recommend her for a one-on-one -on -one personalized analysis. Wonderful. Oh yeah, Shannon is definitely a fan favorite in our community. Uh, we will be sure to link up her website, Color Curate, in the show notes at alisonlobatis.com slash podcast. For now, are you ready to dive into your style story chat with Stephanie? Yes, I am so excited. And now here's my conversation with Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Welcome to the show. I am so excited to get to talk to you today a little bit more about your style struggles. But first off, would you mind giving our audience a quick intro? Uh, sure. I'm Steph Johnson. I am a full-time school counselor. So I'm working in public schools every single day. Love what I do. Love walking in the door every day, but super busy. Um, also, uh, coach and train other school counselors. I have a podcast. I have a family. I have teenagers. So I've got a lot going on. Yes, you do. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about your podcast. Uh, so our podcast is School for School Counselors. Uh, we serve public school counselors uh, who are just looking to up their game, who are looking to serve students in an even better capacity than they're doing now to really guide and empower and advocate for our field. So it's it's been an interesting journey. It's one of those that I didn't anticipate being on. Uh, it started as a lot of things did during COVID and quarantines and all of us with way too much time on our hands and too much technology. And <laughs> it has grown into a huge community uh, that I, I love dearly, but man, oh man, it takes a lot of time too. That's amazing. That is so awesome. I, I if you're not watching this on YouTube, everybody, you got to check out Steph's background. I, I appreciate a beautiful podcast background and she has one. <laughs> Thank you. So I am so happy to talk to you today a little bit more about some of the issues that dealing with, you know, with personal style, working in a school, and you shared some of those struggles, but I kind of want to start with the end goal in mind so we can sort of work our way through this conversation to getting to a place where we've got some great actionable takeaways. So what is your goal or vision right now for your wardrobe? My goal is to feel more, more empowered through it, if that makes sense, and to feel like it's not so discombobulated all the time. And to know that everything that I have in there is something that makes me not only look my best, but feel my best, if that makes sense. Uh, because I'm, I'm in a time in my life here where, you know, things are changing, body shapes are changing, I'm aging, I'm feeling it some days. And like I said, I'm busy. So I'm running, running, running. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time thinking about what looks good or how things go together. I just want it, I want it done, if that makes sense. It does. It totally makes sense. You want to be able to wave that magic wand, right? To just fix all the wardrobe issues, make everything work cohesively in your closet, have the right pieces in there. And I think you hit on such an important point is it's really about how it makes you feel, right? It's about putting on yeah. those outfits and knowing that when you walk out the door, you are showing up as the best version of yourself. And you had mentioned, you know, struggles with some body things that are changing. Tell me a little bit more about that. Just middle age, man, when it comes down, it comes down hard. And, you know, people always warn, you know, when you hit 40 or when you hit 45, I never believed that was true until I was there. And now I totally believe that things are getting rounder, things are, are moving into different places. And it's hard to dress a body that you haven't had before. 
It's mm-hmm. hard to understand how things lay and how, you know, what's going to really emphasize what you want to emphasize. The, the tummy is is always a thing as you get older. You, how do you, how do you hide it without trying to look like you're hiding it? Those kinds of things. It's come down full force. I, I'm starting to reconcile myself with the fact that yes, I'm I'm getting older, even though I don't feel that way in my head. I still feel like I'm about 24, 25 in my head. Uh, I'm not looking that way, and so I want to feel more confident in my choices and feel like I'm putting my best foot forward. Totally. Yep. Totally makes sense. And we, a lot of us struggle with that midlife transition where we feel like, Hey, this used to work for me. And now I'm having to relearn all of this and basically reinvent my wardrobe as a result of that. And the cool thing about that is that it's also an opportunity for us to learn more, explore more, experiment with style and figure out what is working so what would you say is currently working for you with your clothes and wardrobe? What is working? I, I feel like I have a pretty good handle on colors. I feel like I, I have a pretty good understanding of of what kind of flatters skin tone and thing like that. I don't I don't think I always get it right, but I think I get pretty close most of the time. I know what I feel good in, but I often catch myself, and this is funny, when I will put something together and then get to work and then an hour and a half later look at myself and go, what was I thinking? Do you know what I mean? I lack that consistency, I guess. I, I don't know a good way to describe that, but being being consistent with the way I feel about things. The color works. I have certain pairs of pants and tops that I really like. I love wearing black, so I always feel good when I wear that. But other than that, I, I feel really kind of like I'm at loose ends. I want to dig in a little bit more to that. You said that you get to work and you realize that it doesn't feel the same way as it did when you walked out of the house. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's happening there? Is this a, like, are you seeing it in the mirror and liking it? And then just what's, where's the disconnect happening where you're not feeling as confident once you get there? You know, I wish I could tell you, <laughs> and that's probably not very helpful, but you know, get dressed in the morning, maybe because I am in a hurry. I'm not really taking the time to have that critical eye. I I don't know, but I can tell you often when I get to work and look at myself in in the mirror at work and it's like, wait a minute, like that did not come together the way it seemed to. And then I'm like, gosh, man, now I got to go. Now I got to go all day like this. Oh my gosh. And so (laughs) we need to get it right the first time. We need to get it from the outset. You had mentioned one of the roadblocks, and this is interesting, that is getting in the way of style is time. And you said you feel like you're always tripping over the clock while you're trying to get out the door in the mornings. And you also work in a place as as an elementary school counselor where you have a lot of holiday themed items. So let's let's talk a little bit more about that. So the time issue and and not feeling like, you know, you're fully prepared in the morning with, with your outfits. Is that is that a matter of just not having the capacity to pre-plan or is is there something else going on there? I think I have done better since I've embraced the capsules. Um, I I think I have done a little bit better, but I think my struggle is trying to have things ready ahead of time. But then when I pre-plan like that, um, I'm kind of a contrary personality. If things are planned out, if they're set forth for me at the get-go, I tend to want to go a different direction. I'm always thinking of new things, right? I'm always thinking of new ideas. I'm always trying to create something new. It's it's just in my nature. So if I have something laid out the night before, typically I won't go for it the next day anyway, which makes absolutely no sense, I realize. But that's just maybe my quirkiness in, in the way that I think about the way that I dress. So, you know, I'll be in the shower in the mornings thinking about, oh, no, let, let's do this other thing instead. And then I just blow the whole thing out of the water. It sounds to me like you want to make the plan, but you also want to honor your creativity in that moment and what feels right to you. So maybe that pre-planning isn't working out for you in that sense because of that. But I do have some ideas around that where where we can still take the pre-planning into consideration but also leave you a little bit of space for that creativity too. And and speaking of creativity, I can imagine that having to dress in holiday themed items probably squelches that to some extent. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. I have had to go along with it. I, I work for a principal who is very much into that. Uh, we wear holiday shirts every Monday. We wear college shirts every Wednesday. We wear school shirts every Friday. And, and I don't enjoy them. I'll be honest with you. I just... I don't enjoy t-shirts. I, I don't think that's my best look anyway. And it's really hard making those look nice. 
uh, still feeling like I look somewhat professional and presentable at work. And I work with a very young staff too, who are very into like online boutique shopping, all the latest trends, all that kind of stuff. And and so you're constantly then trying to compare against that as well, uh, trying to, to keep up with the youngsters on campus and, and keep up appearances. So it's kind of a double-edged sword in that way. Lots of holiday items and then lots of this fast fashion boutique stuff that you're trying to keep up with too. I did read one of your robot blocks in your pre-show survey uh, that you had mentioned that you don't assign a large part of your worth to your appearance, but you do work in a place with lots of young, stylish women. And that makes you feel yeah. a little bit frumpy sometimes. I, I did want to touch on that. I feel like it's important to address that first off, that you don't assign your worth to how you look, which is actually a really good thing, right? Because our worth isn't tied to appearance. That is something that is inherent. But the self-confidence part of that is really kind of what you're hitting on here is that, you know, when you're around these younger stylish people, then that's kind of like that hit to your confidence. And I think that that's why at this age, it's so important for us to really kind of have that refocus back on our, how we dress and learning, you know, what does this transition phase look like for me? And that visibility portion of things too, you know, especially as we age is we want to remain vis- visible, visible, and we want to remain relevant and all of those things and bringing that back into the equation. And knowing that you can feel as stylish as the younger women that you do work with, because style is a skill and anybody can learn that. And it's something that we can just continue to work through the rest of our lives, honestly, which is awesome. I just wanted to touch on that because I, I, I do love that you said that you don't tie your worth to that. But I, I think that the, the piece of that that we can work on is just really that confidence portion and, and leaning into that and leaning into your creativity. So I'm excited for <laughs> this conversation. I feel like we're going to get into some great, great takeaways. Another thing that you mentioned in your Roblox was that you want to feel like you look amazing, but your mid-40s mom bod is hard to dress. You said this tummy is no joke. And again, like learning to dress your body shape is important. And the good news is, again, this is one of those style skills that we absolutely can work on. And there are some solutions here in this. So the last thing that you summarized as your main issue is that mixing and matching is not working for you. So tell me a little bit more about that issue. I think it, it just goes back to identifying what's what's going where, what, where are things going, what's happening, just feeling more well-versed in that and understanding how things go together, how, how different shapes go together, all of those things to really create a really nice picture instead of just kind of this haphazard, whatever's going on, you know, slapping stuff together. I have a lot of unrelated items that just kind of hang out in my closet. And sometimes trying to piece those together feels like an exercise in futility. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Where you just feel like, why why does this, why is this even here? I don't even know if this is here, but you don't get rid of them for some reason. And so you're constantly picking them up and going, I I don't know what to do with this. Yes, definitely. So lastly, I want to ask how long have these challenges been going on? Is this something that's relatively new or do you feel like this has been a longer term struggle? I, for me, I think it's been probably the last five or six years because my age too has has accelerated this process. My body shape has changed quite a bit here in the last few years. I think too, just time wise, now being a business owner, being a podcaster, being a full time employee, all of those things together has really limited kind of the mental space for all of that too. So I, I haven't had as much time to think about it as I had before. So I think it's just kind of a perfect storm of a lot of things. But I would say probably the past five, six years, it's really started punching me in the face. This is a great segue into your style story, because I would love to dig in to find out sort of, you know, what your influences were growing up and and when you felt the most stylish. And for our listeners who are not yet familiar with our style stories in the show format, this is where we delve a little bit deeper into everyone's style journey to learn about the influences, the experiences, the things that Happened in our past, which can include anything from our clothing choices, the options we had available to us from childhood to adulthood, the messages that we've heard about style and appearance, and our stories can be shaped by our own choices, as well as the external influences that may have been imposed upon us growing up. So first question, did you have a chance to look through any of your old photographs before our 
recording session today. I did. I did. It's it's funny to look back and see some of the stuff that I thought was amazing. <laughs> it's kind of funny now. To see. What was your favorite memory? My favorite memory for me, you know, I wasn't, it, it, maybe this is part of it too. I wasn't super invested in the way that I looked or clothing or appearance and, until I probably got to high school. And, you know, that was the 90s, that crop top, wide leg jean, Doc Martin kind of thing. And, and I, I did love that. It's funny to see it coming back around now. It's really funny to see that. But I spent a lot of time not really thinking about that because I was always in a uniform of some kind. I was in a dance team uniform or something like that. So I, I didn't have to spend a huge amount of time on it because it was already selected for me. When I was a kid, we weren't poor, but we didn't have a lot of extra income just to go, you know, run to the mall and go shopping. That wasn't until later in my childhood. And so, you know, my choices were limited. I wore lots of hand-me-downs from family members. I can remember one cousin who handed down a bag of clothing and she had a pair of jeans in this bag that were just like the jeans to have back when I don't I don't, I'm not sure if you remember, but back when, you know, the guest jeans were the big deal and they had the little patch on the pocket and everybody mm -hmm. wanted the triangle patch. And she had a pair of jeans in that bag and, and I knew they were coming and I was so excited to get these jeans. But when they came and we went through the bag and saw what she had, what she had handed down to me, she had taken all those jeans and cut the patches off the back pockets. And so there were just these triangle holes in the back pockets of these jeans. And so my mom and I being crafty and, and making the best out of a situation went, put some cute little patches on the pockets and kind of dolled them up and made them cute. But it just never, it just never felt right to wear those. Do you know what I mean? And, and that memory has stuck with me. I, I still think about it even when, when family members hand clothing down to my kids. I'm always looking at it thinking, have, have they sent their best? What? I think I internalized some messages from that. I'm a licensed therapist too. So I've been, I've been around this story quite a bit in my head. And I do think I internalized some messages from that for sure. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I never, never really ascribed a ton of my worth to that. So it was a sting, but it wasn't a lasting impression. But that is one thing that I do remember about dressing myself growing up. It's just trying to keep up with people and feeling like I wasn't ever going to be able to do that. Kind of that feeling of, the second rate, right? Whenever you're getting those things. Yes. yes. Yeah. That totally makes yeah. sense. Do you feel like you were able to collect any clues about your personal style today when you were able to re review those photos? Related to my style today, I would say, I don't know. I don't, I don't see a lot of connection other than I, maybe that I, I feel like I'm just kind of grabbing whatever I can get in a way, if that makes sense. Maybe taking what I can get since following you and, and following your work and really trying to learn and invest in, in these ideas, I do think that I have shortchanged myself in a lot of ways with my wardrobe. I have not invested in the quality pieces, not really have been willing to spend the money on myself that I probably should, because we know that well-made clothes fit better. They look better. But that, that's that been a struggle for me a little bit because I can always think of something else that I could do instead. So it's really about giving yourself that permission to make the investment into the quality pieces that are going to be those heck yes items will be the pieces that you will want to wear over and over again and mix and match in multiple different ways. So yeah, I think that I think we hit on something really important there is, is about giving yourself that permission and understanding that you are worthy of the pieces and and having this cohesive wardrobe that works for you. So tell me a little bit about your style role models growing up. Did you have some people you looked up to and emulated? Oh, uh, you're, you're not going to appreciate this answer. Not really. I think maybe some of those teen idols that now honestly don't even come to mind as I'm talking. I was I was very invested in kind of my own world. I do remember one little girl in school that was a pretty affluent kiddo and had all the latest things. And I remember really looking up to her and wanting to have the kinds of outfits that she had. They were all very coordinated. They were very expensive. It wasn't anything that we could have ever afforded to buy. But then eventually I did manage to get one of those outfits. 
And I remember walking into school feeling like a boss wearing that thing. Man, I was so proud and got into school. And of course, in my mind, expected everyone to take notice and no one noticed. I do remember that, but I don't remember any sort of icons or idols or anything like that. That just wasn't the way my home was. It just wasn't the way that we looked at things. Was there any other messaging growing up around style or shopping that that you recall? Just that, you know, you went when you needed to. You did the best you could with what you had, those kinds of things. My mom always wanted me to be cute. And she always, it's, I'm, I feel like I'm painting this picture of sadness. And it wasn't, it was great. But, you know, I do think there was always that feeling in the back of my mind of the haves versus the have nots, that kind of thing. As I'm talking through this, I'm remembering a couple of old TV shows and the kids on the TV shows, I remember identifying with because of the way they dressed. If you remember, there was an old show called Blossom. Yeah. And she had the overall shorts and the hats and the flowers, and it was kind of quirky. And and I remember that. I remember an even older show called Punky Brewster. I don't know if you're old enough to remember that one. But oh, yes. I loved that kid. <laughs> loved it. The bandanas and, and the weird shoes and all that kind of stuff. I remember identifying with those kiddos on TV because that's what I had access to. I, I'm seeing this this strand of creativity that's running throughout your style story from your influences being, you know, Punky Brewster, she yeah. her mixing and all the colors and, and, and blossom and, and this kind of the same thing. She had the oversized hats and uh, just everything was super quirky about her style. And also you share that story about you and your mother and how you, you know, creatively made those jeans work. Like you found your own spin on that and how you were going to create your own patches for the jeans. And, I think this is such an important clue in your in your full story about who you are today and just tapping back into that creativity and that experimentation. I'd like to go back a little bit to really talk about kind of age 14, 15. Uh, if you can recall that period in your life, because that is where a lot of us are forming that style of identity and we're playing with some different, trying out new things and, and seeing what feels like us. Did you have access to play around with style at, at, at that time in your life? And if so, what did that look like for you? Around that time, I think was when we we were we were going shopping a little bit more. We were shopping for recreation at that point. We had a big move across the country. So it, there were a lot of things going on at that time. I remember that's back, you know, in the overall shorts days and the bodysuits, you know, short sleeve bodysuits with the you know, the boots and that kind of stuff. I I can remember lots of polka dots, lots of black and white. I think that's where my love for for kind of those monochrome looks came from. The black and white, the you know, very streamlined color schemes, that kind of thing. Which is funny as we're talking about creativity, that doesn't really fit with that at all. But I remember a lot of that. I remember a lot of those baby doll dresses with leggings and boots. I loved those a lot. And I remember playing around with, we went to New York City one time and went on a shopping trip in New York City. And I came back, I can't believe my mother let me wear these. They were like acid wash jeans. They had big, like one inch grommets all over them with chains running through all the grommets. And here I'm walking through like junior high school with these chains going swack, swack, swack on my pants all day long. But I thought I was the coolest thing ever. I love the edginess of that and the fact that nobody around me had anything like that. And that, so I thought that was really cool. Ah, I love this so much because we get to get to the takeaways portion now. And that's like the perfect segue into the first thing that I'm just seeing that is so kind of blatantly obvious in all of this conversation that we've been having is I really see a space here for you to explore this creativity. I see that you're drawn to these these different pieces like the like that pair of jeans or you know these these different styles that speak to you and maybe feeling a little bit boxed in possibly by your profession through some some issues right now with with your changing body and you know, what does aging look like? And where do you want to be in this space in your life? And really just viewing this as that opportunity to lean into style being a skill and being something that you can continuously work on, but also leaning into you are worthy of exploring that creativity and tapping into those things that make you you and finding ways to make that work for you. And I think that if, if we can get this part right, it's going to 
help out in some other areas too. For instance, with your time constraints in the morning, pre-planning outfits isn't working out well for you as far as like on a daily basis, because you want that creativity and that leverage to say, well, I'm not feeling this today. Like today I'm feeling more like this. And when you get to school, right. you didn't honor that feeling and that instinct that you had, then that's where that disconnect is happening. So maybe experimentation for you looks like carving out 30 minutes on a Saturday and pulling some of your favorite pieces out of your closet and looking at some different ways to mix and match those items with pieces that you already have. So maybe you have something that is more of a statement making piece that feels so like you that you want to be able to wear in multiple ways and experimenting with trying that piece on, maybe going to Pinterest and searching some different ways that you can style that item and then taking some photos of those different groupings. You can either try them on or you can kind of lay them out on your bed by just having some ideas on your phone so that you can shortcut that process in the morning. So it's not as prescriptive. It's not telling you, you must wear these pieces on these days of the week, but really just having those go-to outfits that feel like you, that have that little bit of signature stuff in them and and just truly do feel like you. And, and I think that this is going to go a long way toward that confidence building too, because if you're showing up as your most authentic, truest self, even if you're with these younger, what you consider fashionable ladies that you're working with, this is your true to you authentic style. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. I think just when we're able to give ourselves that permission, and honestly, that's one of the, the beautiful things about getting older is that we do start to give ourselves permission to show up how we feel the most true and most authentic in any space. And I think that, you know, just really creating this time for experimentation just like you did when you were a teenager, when you were a teen, everything was changing, right? And you were figuring out that identity then and that body then and all the things. There were those external factors, which we care so much more about when we're younger, like what are the kids at school going to think of me? And, and, and your story that you told about showing up in that outfit where you felt amazing, but it didn't change anything externally. The cool thing about it when we get older is that we start to care more about those internal feelings than we do about what's happening on the outside and what other people are thinking about us. So I really just see this as an opportunity for you to get back in touch with, with your teen self and, and really just start to explore those things that, that make you feel your best self and make you feel the most confident. On a more practical level, I would say that a closet clean out is probably going to be super beneficial for you at this point. I think you mentioned that it'd been about a year since you had cleaned your closet out. So really just getting rid of that noise, that clutter, anything in there that you're not wearing, that's not lighting you up, those pieces that are not heck yes items, which, which I'm suspecting there are quite a few. Am I right? Yes. Only hold on to the pieces that do make you feel like a million bucks, that fit and flatter your body, that the colors make you feel good. You know, uh, all of the things that we really look for in a heck yes item, that's what you want to keep in your closet. And then you can start rebuilding from there. So I have a, a closet download that you can print out. It's at alphaformulas.com slash clean closet. We'll take you through all the steps, all of the questions that you need to ask yourself. Do you struggle to get rid of things? Is that very much uh, because for me, it is about the patterns and the textures. I don't want to let those go. It's, it's a strange thing. And, and that's okay because with this sorting method, you'll have a stash box. If there are things that you're not quite ready to get rid of that you're just kind of on the fence about, yeah. you think, oh, I may, I may access that later on. You can put those items in that stash box and just keep it out of sight, out of mind. Really, the point here is to have the pieces in your closet that you are wearing consistently and that you love. And then that's when you start rebuilding from there and figuring out, do I have gaps in my wardrobe? Do you feel like your closet staples are in a good place? I, I'm suspecting no. I think that you shared that you don't really feel like you have the right foundational pieces. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I've been working to build them over probably the last year, but it's a slow process. And I feel like sometimes I'll pick some some new pieces. I'm trying to be really intentional about what I find and what I'm curating now. But, you know, I'm kind of back in that that space where it's like, ah, that, that didn't really, that didn't work the way I thought it would, that kind of thing. And so I, I tend to hold on to them when they're not working just a little bit longer because I'm afraid I'm not going to find anything better, if that makes sense. Yes, totally. We'll circle back to closet staples in a minute, but I did want to get just kind of your general feelings about the space of experimentation and creativity in your wardrobe and, and showing up in what's making you feel authentic at this phase in life. 
So are you asking me like what what is making me feel authentic right now? Um, what what do you think about that approach of, of experimentation oh. and 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 delving into kind of the pieces that you used to be drawn to and seeing how those can fit into your style today? You know, as you talk about that, it really made my heart smile as I heard you talking through that and just saying, like, it's time. It's time to get back into that. It's time to look into it with intentionality, right? Let's find the things we love. Let's figure out how to make them work. But but the idea of experimenting with all of that and, and really kind of playing with it again, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's pretty exciting. And, and I don't know why I needed to hear it from another person. I don't know why I needed to get that permission to do that. But, you know, sometimes we do that to ourselves. I can tell you, as I'm thinking about this, I'm I'm already just getting excited. I'm ready to go dive in the closet now. As we're talking, I'm ready to get on this <laughs> because I do. I mean, I I love some. I love me some louder color sometimes. Some some more in your face prints. I love experimenting with the different kinds of drapes of fabrics and things like that. And I used to be really really into that. And I think somewhere along the way, actually, I know exactly where I did. I got the idea that you had to conform to be able to be part of everything. And I think that is something that has led me in a different direction than, than where my heart really wants to go. Can you tell me more about that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I worked at a very difficult school. And you know, if you if you speak, spend any time with educators, you will hear these horror stories, right, of schools and principals and, and those kinds of things. And I worked for a principal who was very, very difficult to get along with. Our personalities did not mesh well. And they ruled that campus almost like a tyrant. And so you had to conform to survive. There was something that happened on that campus called snipering. And that's what we called it. And you would show up for work the next day and someone would just be gone. There would be no evidence of them having ever worked there. Their classroom would be completely cleaned out. No one ever talked about them. And it was a clear signal, right? You follow the rules, you conform. You'd better be part of the way that we're doing things or you're out. And looking back, I really do think that's part of it where I... You know, I had to make that decision. Do I align or do I not? And to have have put myself forward and stuck out in that way would have been very, very risky. And I think I just kept that mindset. It was just safer mm -hmm. to fall in line with what everyone else was doing. And and I do think I lost a little piece of myself along the way. Yeah. Yes. This is this is that opportunity to break out of that conformist box that it, and it was just such a, a fear-based place to be, honestly, and now realizing that you do have that permission to step out and be who you are and to shine. And who knows, like you could be inspiring the women that you're working with to, you know, to step into that space and say, gosh, I love how Steph dresses. She's so creative and she just really expresses her personality through through her style. And, and I just see so many amazing opportunities for you in this space. So I'm excited for you. So Me excited. Too. And, and, you know, really just getting those basics in place, too, is going to help you to have the foundational pieces to be able to add in then that creativity. And, and and you can work the other way around, too. If you have the pieces that you love and those patterns that you're drawn to or the, the colors, whatever makes your heart smile, then you can build the outfits around that as long as you have the right staples in place. And some of the closet staples that I recommend, honestly, these are going to vary drastically based upon your lifestyle, obviously. And, and where you work and et cetera, and what your dress codes are. But the first place I start is with great fitting denim, which a lot of people are like, yes, but that's a unicorn piece. It truly is. And it's something that is worth the effort. I feel like there's so much versatility in denim and we can wear it through so many facets of life, especially black jeans. I mean, you can dress them up or down super easily and just finding good jeans that fit you well is an important part of building that foundation of your closet. And I'm suspecting working in a school, you, you probably are able to wear jeans pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you have jeans right now? I do. And, and it's funny to hear you talk because my black jeans are my favorite. And I have found some that, that I think fit very well. I always feel very confident when I wear those. And so, yeah, I love them. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. Great place to start. And if you find a pair of jeans that you love, PSA to everyone out there listening, buy them in every wash. <laughs> Do it the day that you buy them if you have the financial means, because when you come back three months later, they're going to be sold out in your size. Or the sizing changes from year to year. I find that some of my favorite retailers, I'm, I, I, this happened this year. I, my size I normally order is different this year. So you just never know, but get, yes. get all the washes. Another great basic is quality tees and tops and your best neutrals. You mentioned that you 
don't like t-shirts too much, but you know, finding those layering pieces is super important to building your outfits as well. And then of course your toppers, your your neutral cardigans, your moto jackets, your blazers, looking for all of those pieces in neutrals so that you can kind of mix and match them. Also, again, being drawn to the colors that you love and being able to use those staple items in your wardrobe are super important. Denim jacket is another piece that I find is like super, super versatile. And you can express your personality with denim jackets. I've seen some really fun, quirky ones, especially this spring. They're just, there's tons of different, different styles out there that you can choose from. Another staple, of course, is going to be your footwear that works for your lifestyle. I recommend taupe and black ankle boots, uh, white sneakers, neutral flats, and sandals, and of course, heels if you need those for work. And then lastly, you're going to look for some timeless accessories for your closet staples like studs and hoop earrings and delicate necklaces. But accessories are a place where you can absolutely take the liberties to express your style in whatever way you want to and find those signature items that really just feel like you and and your personality and be able to express them in that way. I want to address the holiday theme items. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Is there something you feel like you have to do? Is there a place that you can find a happy compromise? I think so. It's back to that whole idea of going along to get along, right? You, you got to try to do what everybody is doing sometimes, especially when you work on a school campus. But I, I do think there's some wiggle room there. I think there's a happy compromise that could be made. Maybe it's dressing in your favorite color or it's finding a pattern in red and pink instead of going full on Valentine's theme. You know, there's there's ways that I think you can marry those two things where you can bring in that creativity, those statement making items that feel like you, but can also lean into the direction of being more holiday themed as well. Like I love the green sweater you're wearing today. We're recording in March, so you know, there are, there are those ways that you can find that are maybe more subtle or maybe just feel more like you, but aren't as full on holiday themed as, as maybe some other people are expressing. We'll put it that way. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> so I'd love to hear your feedback. What are your thoughts on these recommendations? I think, I think even just through this conversation, even just being a simple, you know, conversation, we're not even in the same room together. It's amazing how empowering talking through all of this really feels and just being encouraged to do the things I think that have been in my heart, but I've just not been ready to do. Been so busy just scrambling, trying to figure out how to make things work within this prescribed paradigm that I don't know necessarily needs to be there. And to hear that I've got a lot of those basics already, I just need to kind of play with them and add the little extras, right? I need to just add the little flares and the flaunts and all the things um, to really make those work and feel like they're more authentic to me. I love that so much. I can't wait. I want to do a follow-up review on this. Uh, uh, when you've had a little bit of time to play around because I'm excited to hear about how you're showing up as Stephanie. I love this. So good. Did you have any other questions for me before we close? I don't think so. I just thank you so much. This has been super fun. I've really enjoyed every minute. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. I appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate you sharing your heart with us and your style story and inspiring me and so many people in the Alpha Formulas community. So thank you. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please take a moment to do it now. I've got an incredible lineup of episodes for you in the coming weeks, and I don't want you to miss a thing. And if you enjoyed listening to the show, I would be so grateful if you just take a moment to rate it and leave a review. I know it seems like a silly thing, but your rating and review really do help, especially for new shows like this one. We're going to chat with Stephanie shortly, but first, will you join me and my producer, Lauren, for a coffee chat? I would love to hear your thoughts about today's conversation. Did you see yourself in any part of Stephanie's story? Have you lost the creative spark in your style? Has your changing body made getting dressed a challenge recently? Well, then let's open a dialogue and connect. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube as Allison Lombatis, and I would love to hear from you. If you share your thoughts about your own style story on social media, please tag me because I'd love to see it and cheer you on. Remember, you are worthy. Style is a skill anyone can learn, and closet contentment is possible. I believe in you. Thanks for tuning in.